Hello friends, welcome back to another interesting video, how sugar is made, unbelievable billion tons of sugar processing in factories. The sweet sugar has a remarkable trip from field to table that many don't even know about. The global sugar industry produces a year's supply that would be distributed to every person on the planet, approximately 50 pounds of sugar. But the journey begins with simple plants, either sugarcane or sugar beets. Let us take this sweet process one step further. Sugarcane, a 20-foot high tropical perennial grass, has been cultivated for sugar for thousands of years. Its use first beginning in New Guinea and estimated 8,000 BC. Ancient Indians first crystallized sugar around 350 AD and established techniques that were carried along the Silk Road. Sugar beets, however, are a more modern source, first used to produce sugar in the 18th century when German chemist Andreas Margraf discovered that they contain sucrose. Napoleon later advocated beet sugar when British blockades limited Caribbean sugar imports. Today, around 80% of the world's sugar is now produced from sugarcane and 20% is produced from sugar beets. Harvesting from the two sources is different. Sugarcane is usually cut mechanically or manually. In most developing countries, workers still cut cane manually with machetes, a back-breaking and time-consuming task that requires skill to cut the stalks at the right angle. A skilled worker can cut about five tons a day for only $1.23 per ton. Mechanical harvesters, costing over $500,000 each, can cut from 100 tons of cane per hour using rotating blades and conveyor belts. The cut cane must be processed within about 24 hours, or the sucrose begins to decay into glucose and fructose. For sugar beets, beets are picked in cooler seasons when sugar content is greatest, typically September to December in the Northern Hemisphere. Large beet harvesters, like the Holmer Terra Dos Phi 470, have sophisticated GPS and yield monitoring systems to lift the roots out of the ground, sever the greens, and sometimes perform some initial cleaning in the field. The newest models have automated stone detection systems to prevent damage to processing equipment. A single modern sugar beet harvester will harvest approximately five acres an hour, filling trucks to transport the beets to processing plants. Beets, in contrast to sugarcane, can be stored in piles for several weeks before processing. After the sugarcane arrives at the factory, it goes through a multi-stage extraction process. The cane goes through high-pressure jets to clear it of soil, stones, and field rubbish. The cane is chopped with rotating knives and shredded into fibrous material with hammer mills at 1,200 revolutions per minute. The shredded cane is fed into a series of roller mills usually four to seven, which crush the stalks at more than 20,000 PSI. Water is used in an imbibition process to aid in the removal of additional juice by osmosis. A tandem mill with modern design can squeeze out approximately 95% of the sugar contained in the cane, and with each subsequent mill, slightly less than the prior one. Sugar beets take a different path. After being thoroughly washed in flume systems that remove up to 99% of soil, the beets are sliced into very thin V-shaped slices known as cossets about the size of french fries. The cossets are then fed into a diffuser, essentially a gigantic countercurrent percolator 300 feet long in which hot water, about roughly 70 degrees Celsius, diffuses the sugar out of the beets. Modern diffusers use sophisticated temperature control and residence time monitoring to optimize extraction and minimize sugar loss. The operation takes about an hour and can extract nearly all the sugar from the beets, leaving spent pulp pressed and dried for animal feed. Juice from either of these operations is raw and contains many impurities that must be eliminated. This treatment, when applied to factory ESS, is called carbonatation, where milk of lime, solution of calcium hydroxide, is used to raise the pH level to around 11 so that impurities settle down. Carbon dioxide is being passed over the solution, which causes calcium carbonate crystals to form that adsorb the other impurities. The solution is filtered on rotary vacuum filters or membrane presses, and the juice remaining is much clearer. Some plants use other purification processes like phosphorus 
phosphatation with the assistance of phosphoric acid or newer membrane filter systems, which can chemically purge impurities. The clear juice is now approximately 15 degrees bricks, 15% by weight of sugar. Then comes evaporation, where the thin juice is boiled down to thick juice, approximately 60 degrees bricks. This is done in huge, multi-effect evaporators, many stories high. The plants typically have four to six effects, evaporation steps. The first being around 120 degrees Celsius, and later effects progressively lower in pressure and temperature. Each effect's vapor is used to heat the next, so the process is very energy efficient. A modern quintuple effect evaporator can cut steam usage by 80% compared to single-effect evaporation. The concentrated syrup is now maple syrup consistency and ready to be crystallized. Crystallization is where the alchemy occurs. The concentrated juice is pumped into vacuum pans, huge stainless steel tanks where boiling is carried out at lower pressure, around 0.2 atm, to avoid caramelization at lower temperatures, around 65 degrees Celsius. As water is evaporated, the supersaturated solution starts precipitating sugar crystals. Experienced operators carefully manage the process with refractometers and viscometers, adding microscopic seed crystals at the right time to regulate crystal size. They can also add alcohol or other additives to regulate crystal shape. A single batch of 60 tons may take three, four hours, with operators changing temperature and vacuum along the way to maximize crystal growth. The resulting mixture of crystals and syrup, referred to as massacute, is then spun in high-speed centrifugal machines at 1,000 to 2,000 revolutions per minute. High-speed centrifuges exert forces of up to 1,000 Gs, which remove the raw sugar crystals and molasses according to differences in density. Centrifuges nowadays have a capacity of 5 tons per cycle in 2, 3 minutes with automatic controls for optimal wash water use. The resulting raw sugar is approximately 96 to 98 percent sucrose and light brown due to the presence of residual molasses films. For white sugar production, this raw sugar is further processed where it's refinished again. Treated with activated carbon or bone char in conventional refineries to decolorize and recrystallize to get pure white sugar that's 99.9% .9 sucrose. Additional ion exchange treatment is given to some high-quality sugars for ultra-high purity. The final processes involve drying and packaging. Wet sugar crystals are processed through large, fluidized bed dryers where 100 degrees Celsius air evaporates remaining moisture to around 0.02% content. Advanced near-infrared sensors monitor moisture content in real time to ensure maximum shelf stability. Dry sugar is then transported to high-speed packaging lines, where laser sorters remove any off-color crystals before portioning into anything from small retail packets, filled at rates up to 200 per minute, to enormous one-ton bulk bags for industrial customers. High-tech packaging lines employ X-ray inspection systems to remove any foreign material, ensuring food safety standards. But that is not the end. Sugar mills are efficiency experts using up all byproducts. The residual plant fibers of sugarcane, bagus, usually fire the factory boilers with more recent mills producing 100, 120 kWh of electricity per ton of cane crushed, plenty to supply their requirements. Some Brazilian factories sell excess electricity to the grid. Molasses has uses in animal feed. One kilogram substitutes 1.3 kilograms of grain. Alcohol, rum, fuel ethanol, and even as a raw material for the production of yeast, citric acid, and amino acids. The lime sludge from cleaning can be treated to produce agricultural lime or mixed with ash to produce construction materials. Even filter cake from juice cleaning is organic fertilizer rich in phosphorus and calcium. 
The size of today's sugar production is enormous. A big sugar factory can produce 20,000 tons of sugar cane daily, which will fill 800 semi-trucks. And from that, it will yield around 2,000 tons of raw sugar. The biggest beet sugar plants, such as in Germany, can run 30,000 tons of beets a day during the campaign. To place this in context, a day's production at a large beet sugar mill would pack 50 million standard packets of sugar. Brazil's largest sugar mill spans more than 1,000 acres and crushes 10 million tons of cane each year. Technology for refining sugar has evolved a long way from ancient times. Today's factories rely on computerized process control systems that track thousands of data points, automated quality monitoring with near-infrared spectroscopy, and advanced energy recovery systems that extract waste heat. Some leading-edge mills utilize high-tech membrane filtration systems that can supplant conventional lime treatment, cutting chemical usage by 90%. Continuous crystallization systems are coming in place of conventional batch vacuum pans, providing efficiency improvement. Digital twin technology now enables operators to test process changes before applying them in actual production. The international sugar trade is no less remarkable. Brazil, the world's biggest producer, ships around 25 million tons a year, enough to sweeten 5 trillion cups of coffee. The European Union has strict production quotas, and Thailand has emerged as Asia's sugar export giant. Raw sugar is shipped in specialized bulkers that carry 50,000 tons, whereas refined sugar is shipped in containerized form. International daily trading in the sugar market exceeds $1 billion, and prices depend on such disparate factors as Brazilian weather and Indian government policies. Surprisingly enough, not every sugar is equal. In addition to generic white sugar, factories churn out specialty products. Brown sugars contain from a little molasses, light golden, 3.5% molasses, to quite a lot of molasses, dark muscovado, 8% molasses, to give flavor and color. Beverage manufacturers use liquid sugars, 67 degrees brick solutions, to make handling easier. Icing sugar is powdered to 10, 40 micron particles with cornstarch, 3%, to stop caking. Specialty sugars such as demerara or turbinado are processed to a minimal level to produce flavors and textures favored by bakers. Even some of the mills create organic and non-GMO certified sugars for niche markets. The sugar industry has major challenges too. Climate change introduces more regular droughts and floods that hit crop yields. Sugarcane is especially sensitive to water shortages. Pests such as sugarcane smut and beet yellows virus can cut yields by 30%. Energy charges contribute up to 40% of production costs in some places. Health issues have produced shrinking per capita use in industrialized countries, yet total worldwide demand grows as the population does. As a reaction to these challenges, the industry has expanded more sustainable technologies from water and fertilizer reducing precision agriculture to closed loop water systems to limit discharge, to biomass gasification projects, potentially rendering mills independent of energy sources. The economic stakes are colossal. Sugar employs more than 100 million people globally, from Indian smallholder farmers to factory workers in the American heartland. Sugar exports are lifelines for foreign exchange in much of the developing world. The industry also propels innovation in farm technology, with new cane varieties providing higher sugar content and disease resistance. There are mills that are turning into biorefineries, not only extracting sugar, but biofuels, bioplastics and biochemicals, the hope of a real circular economy. So the next time you indulge in something sweet, pause to appreciate the amazing journey behind every grain of sugar. From its ancient beginnings to its current mass production, the history of sugar is one of human innovation and industrial power. It's one traced across fields in the tropics and temperate world, in factories chugging with technology, and in global systems that deliver sweetness to our world. The sugar in your cupboard embodies centuries of agricultural progress, engineering innovation, 
and economic development, all encapsulated in those plain white crystals. If you enjoyed this in-depth look at the production of sugar, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on how everyday items are manufactured on a large scale. Have you ever been to a sugar plantation or factory? What other food manufacturing processes would you like us to cover? Let us know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.